Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Infrastructure works to restore the Badlil after a major landslide. The SLDB approves $1.5 million to households and businesses under the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan. And Rotary Club of St. Lucia partners with Cabot to aid St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor continue to assess damage sustained following the heavy rains that occurred during the early hours of Thursday morning. The rains were due to a combination of weather systems, a mid to upper level trough together with an upper level jet stream. The main access route between the north and south of the island, the Bad Lil, was damaged, disrupting travel. Overnight teams worked to stabilize the section of the road in the aftermath of a landslide. Hamadi Mark has that story. The Ministry of Infrastructure is spearheading an emergency response to a landslide that occurred along the Badalil as a result of high-intensity rains early Thursday, April 29, 2021. Minister for Infrastructure Honorable Stevenson King at a media briefing said the situation is being managed as contractors are undertaking remedial works to bring relief to residents and commuters. So today, as you've been told, we are here. There is a contractor on site uh, attempting to bring what I call temporary relief to the situation. And that includes uh, the piping of the existing drain northbound to the left to allow for the continuation of the water to flow, but um, preparing it in a way that will in increase the, the, the carriageway to allow a two-way traffic in the next few hours and for the next few days and maybe weeks while the geotechnical investigations are done and the necessary engineering and other design um, act activities are taken for possible future intervention. Speaking to the seriousness of the situation, Deputy Chief Engineer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Len Leon, says the landslide revealed erosion of the undercarriageway. The situation, he explains, requires further assessment to decide upon a permanent solution. However, plans are underway to mitigate the issue and allow flow of traffic. As you can see behind me, is works going on to extend the carriageway on the upper side of, of the carriageway. This is being done using crushed stone. Uh, we've already embedded wasco pipes underneath to continuously have the, the surface runoff water being able to continue down the bad lil. We are building, we are filling up right now with cr crusher run. We shall compact it and stabilize it, and then we shall put a asphalt surfacing on the top to make the actual carriageway hopefully at least 6.3 meters wide, allowing vehicles to move in both directions. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ivor Daniels, says they are working with utility companies to ensure these services are restored. I believe the, the power is restored. The, the water supply, I do not believe that there's much of, of it going through here, but I think the other utilities like, like Flu um, perhaps are now trying to restore their, their own um, utility. But I think one of the critical ones, you know, is, is electricity, yeah. it, it is energy. So that has been restored in this area, making it as safe as possible. Because we also need to maneuver sooner or later an excavator below there. And it has to maneuver very safely to ensure that we can restore the retaining wall. Superintendent of Police Elvis Thomas on the safety of pedestrians says there are mechanisms in place to accommodate emergency personnel and people traveling to and from work using a shuttle system. So what we are doing, we have persons on, on either point managing who comes in. Um, persons can walk to a certain point. There are shuttles that are available. We have persons on the ground who will manage how persons walk through the area is not just a matter of coming through, but they will have designated areas to go through. There are persons who are assigned to ensure that those persons walking through are safe and no accident happens. So we want persons to um, be rest assured that we are doing everything um, in our power to work with them to ensure that they get to work, but at the same time, the work here is completed. 
The superintendent cautions the public against spectator visits to the site and asks for cooperation and patience as the situation is being remedied. From the Government Information Service, Kumadi Mark reporting. The Met Office is urging the public to be cautious as the weather system will continue to cause cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean region. The St. Lucia Development Bank has to date approved blended finance of up to $1.5 million to households and the business community as part of interventions under the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan, ERRP. Under its pillar to stimulate the economy, the government of St. Lucia has partnered with the SLDB to offer $8.4 million in loan and grant support to medium, small and micro enterprises with a focus on food security and adaptation of digital technologies and a $5 million working capital injection program. Managing Director Vincent Boland indicates that the programs have drawn tremendous response by the public. We totaled about 119 inquiries. Okay. We have generated applications of about $2.5 million. We have approvals of up to $1.5 million. And we are disbursing that, you know, as, as needed, as, as persons um, get all the information that we need, we are able to disburse. It's, and it, it's a broad spectrum. We have seen people come from the preschools, we've seen farmers, we've seen hairdressers, we've seen you know, small restaurants, medium-sized restaurants, mm -hmm. people who were able to collate their information and then come to us and say, listen, this is what I need. And they've, they've received the grant, mm -hmm. as well as the, the, the small loan. And you're seeing that they are looking at working capital to be able to reposition their business, to pay some of their staff. Despite the immense reception by the public, the majority of the combined allocation of the two programs, 13.4 million, has yet to be taken up by households and the business community in the wake of the pandemic. Boland explains a critical factor impeding the application process. Persons don't have um, records readily available. Okay. So we asked for, hey, the, the World Bank, certain conditions were, were put in, for instance, you had to show that you had a 30% reduction in your revenue. Yeah? Wow. Um, you know, now most, most businesses will tell you, yes. They we, feel a pinch. They, we, we had a, a drastic decline. And we're saying, okay, well, let's see that. Let's see your management accounts. Now, for the smaller business, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not that readily available. They have to either go and take their bank statements and then come up with, you know, the information to show, listen, this is what I, I earned before and this is what has happened to me now. Mm -hmm. So we're still grappling with that and, and working through. And we have actually adopted an approach internally to try and see how best we can assist them in, in generating the information. SLDB's Managing Director, Vincent Boland. The bank continues to welcome applications for the two programs. As St. Lucia joins the Americas in commemorating the 19th vaccination week during the period of the 24th to the 30th of April 2021, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is sensitizing the public on the importance of vaccines. During a panel discussion held on Friday, Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and National Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatis explained that the National Immunization Program in St. Lucia is some 44 years old, having begun in 1977. The program commenced with just about three vaccines and has since expanded to what exists today. Jabatis indicated that while many successes have been recorded to date, there have been challenges as well. You know, it, it's really a good thing to see that, you know, we've, we've maintained um, vaccination coverage of approximately 90 to 99 percent, wow. you know, in our, in, in our, in the various antigens. Of course, we, we have um, some challenges and I will continue to say that our challenges as well as with the over one year olds, this is when we tend to see a decline in the coverage for various reasons. You know, some pe people feel after a child has passed a year, it's almost like for them they're out of the woods. Mm -hmm. You know, they tend to kind of be a little late. They, they tend to be a little late back, back at that point. But of course, we, we, we've noted it as a, as, as a, I won't say a gap, but something of concern. And for us in the program, we continually monitor evaluate, re-strategize to ensure that 
um, we sustain and we maintain um, the coverages, the, the recommended coverages. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Glensford Joseph noted that while various vaccines may be available for the same virus, the doses to achieve the desired effect may vary. Dr. Joseph explained how medical experts determine the dosage. Uh, dose, they would recognize that the body's immune response would, you know, move to a certain level in terms of the level of antibodies being produced and uh, would recognize that um, if they give a second dose, then the level of antibodies or the immune response is even more robust. Right. And so that um, if one dose is going to give you some, let's say, 60% or so um, efficacy or effectiveness, then priming that response with a second dose would allow you to get to a higher level. Now with the AstraZeneca, we have seen that the second dose would allow us to have some 70% or so level of efficacy or you're reducing the risk of um, developing the severe form of the illness develop, that is by some 70%. Common side effects of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine include fever, chills, headache and malaise to name a few. These according to the National Immunization Manager should subside in 24 to 48 hours. However, if side effects persist or become more severe, the individual is advised to seek medical care. Community pediatrician Dr. Ugan Lucy explained the cause of the side effects. Uh, those side effects are the result of the reaction of the vaccine in the body because as it's inside the immune response to produce what Dr. Uh, Joseph said, antibodies and some cells, there are also some old innate response mm -hmm. that, like, that will be incited, like production of cytokines. So we know when anybody gets a vaccine, those will be incited to, and those are some of the things that will cause the fever, the headache, you know, the feeling unwell. So right. usually it accompanies all of those vaccines and the physician will prepare whoever is taking that you may feel this and you may feel that. And we see that with other drugs. St. Lucia has administered over 24,000 first doses and over 1,000 second doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine to date. As the ministry continues to roll out the campaign, everyone is encouraged to get vaccinated. A sitting of the House of Assembly is scheduled for Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, with papers to be laid by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, and the Honorable Minister for Commerce, Industry, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs. The House will also consider a motion for Parliament to further extend the state of emergency. The proposed extension is for an additional period of five months, commencing from the 17th day of May 2021 and ending on the 16th day of October 2021, in accordance with Section 17.6 of the Constitution of St. Lucia, Cap 1.01, St. Lucia has been under a state of emergency approved by Parliament that commenced on the 11th of February 2021 and ending on the 16th of May 2021. A number of bills are also down for consideration including counter-trafficking amendment and tourism stimulus and investment amendment. Tuesday's sitting is scheduled to commence at 10 a.m. The sitting of the Senate is scheduled for Thursday, May 6, 2021 at 10 a.m. In keeping with the protocols established for the management of COVID-19, members of the public will not be allowed in the chamber gallery during the sittings. The public can view the live proceedings on the national television network NTN, Channel 122, and Government of St. Lucia Facebook page and YouTube channel. The AFIA Foundation, JetBlue, and the Commission of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, are working together to deliver much-needed relief supplies to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The first in a series of shipments arrived in St. Lucia on Friday, April 23, via JetBlue, for immediate onward shipment to St. Vincent. The relief supplies include urgently needed items such as face masks, face shields, blankets, gloves, isolation gowns and adult diapers. Director General Dr. Didicus Jules thanked the organizations for their generous contributions and collaboration to expeditiously get supplies to St. Vincent.
The OECS Commission would like to express its sincerest appreciation to the AFIA Foundation for sending 206,000 US dollars worth of medical supplies that include adult pampers and uh, face masks and PPE gear and particularly masks that may be helping people with respiratory problems in the face of the ash in the air to, to manage this situation. We are particularly grateful to JetBlue for having um, shipped that stuff to St. Lucia free of cost for the foundation and um, we are responsible for ensuring now that it gets on to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in good condition. We also want to express thanks to the medical professionals on the move and Direct Relief who also played a role in helping us to um, link up with the AFIA Foundation. Uh, in order to have that support provided. Volcanic eruptions began in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Friday, April 9, 2021. Two weeks later, sporadic eruptions accompanied by pyroclastic flows continued to force residents from the north of the island, the Red Zone, to seek refuge in shelters and in neighboring islands. The OECS Commission has launched a Stronger Together campaign as an official emergency response on behalf of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Meanwhile, the Rotary Club of St. Lucia has partnered with Cabot St. Lucia to provide assistance to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. More in this report. The St. Lucia business community continues to exercise their corporate social responsibility, contributing to relief efforts in St. Vincent. The latest show of support came from Cabot St. Lucia as they collaborated with the Rotary Club of St. Lucia to supply water and water storage tanks to St. Vincent and the Grenadines Relief Program. CFO of Cabot St. Lucia, Rita Hawkins, says the company is delighted to collaborate with the Rotary Club of St. Lucia as they both prioritize service to others above self. We've donated um, water and water tanks uh, because water is an essential element of life and we understand now St. Vincent does not have much water, everything is contaminated with ash and so we thought that this would be the first spot of call. I mean, we may, we may look at some more aid down the road as things progress but at the moment we think water is important for the people and hence the reason why we made this donation. Speaking on the partnership with Cabot St. Lucia, the International Service Director of Rotary St. Lucia, Albert Daniels, says he is tasked with creating linkages to help bring relief to individuals in distress. We were really happy when Cabot reached out to us and offered to make this donation of water to our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent because across the district of the 7030, we have a family of Rotary with Rotarians on the ground in every country ready and willing to respond to disasters. So we're very grateful to Cabot for making this donation and our sisters and brothers in Rotary clubs in St. Vincent will be the implementing arm in ensuring that this donation from a fantastic corporate citizen will go a long way to meeting the needs in this time of disaster. Lindy Eriste, Acting Deputy Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, says the entity is heartened by the efforts and support received from Cabot and the corporate community. We are very much aware that it is in times like these that we all need each other and we are happy that they have made a contribution in reducing the pain and some of the pressure of our colleagues our, in the, our sister I St. Benson and the Grenadines. We are very grateful, even more so, if I may add, that um, if their collaboration with Ro Rotary Club of St. Lucia in assisting and ensuring that um, our pers persons in St. Benson, life is a lot easier for those persons, and even more so that they'll be able to return to a state of normalcy in the near future. Ariste encouraged the populace to continue the positive trend of lending support to the neighboring island. From the Government Information Service, I'm Homer Mark. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Creole. I'm going to be a little bit of a baby. 
really? How was that? It wasn't bad. The dentist was really nice and she told me that mouth rinsing is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink anything, it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember, water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight any diseases including COVID-19. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta Janelle, Monsieur Madame Department Kenny Responsabilité pour information à gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS. Ensemble puis télévision nationale puis à NTN, Capositeur Nouvelle Aquayol, Capositeur Primus Hutchinson. Mauvais à Falaï, qui fait à ce grand chemin Badelel, du moins go la pluie, jeudi, à mercredi, au soir, jeudi bon matin, Jacques a reçu une bonne assistance. Pour ça, là, qui a fait connexion et puis chemin sorti qu'à ce type de nuit, tout veut y dommager sérieusement les à Falaï descendent et puis en portion grand chemin ça là. Ça, en résultat, chemin, en résultat de ça, chemin tenu pour tout veut y fermer pour trafic. Quand tu avais déjà commencé pour adresser situation ça là. Premier ministre, nous avons Alain Chastney, avec le ministre pour le développement économique, qui aussi est représentatif pour la façade East, South, Sud, East Castry, au nom de Guy Joseph, qui a visité le dommage là hier après-midi. Secrétaire permanent, le ministre des Affaires et Travaux et Construction, M. Ivan Daniel, parlé concernant la situation là, avec des marches qui sont à sous pied pour adresser la situation. Il fait ça après une conférence et puis les membres de la PIA qui étaient prêts à en bas de la même côté à faire la fête là. Selon M. Daniel, ça qui a fait, c'est côté Yotini pour pousser ces voiles massives à descendre à ce côté pour faire l'air pour ce travail et pour bâtir en place toujours pour faire l'air pour l'auto ça passer. Ça nous joue un peu de trois tuyaux from Wasco. Nous avons placé, nous avons un matériau, nous avons un wash. Nous avons mis là, l'excavateur a travaillé, le chocolat a venu. Um, so, nous 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 estimations c'est peut-être bon en dernier temps encore peut-être nous qu'ils ouvert chez moi pas ouvert pour toute machine mais ouvert assez pour quitter d'autres machines passer okay. mais pour à présent nous pas quitter machine officielle c'est c'est une urgence um, pour ambulance et bah ça passe malgré mauvais affaire affaire là ça là ça met un bout à sa transportation en route ça là M. Daniel dit qu'il y a un long monde qui a marché, sorti à Valais, Mabouya pour descendre à Vin Poisson. Parce qu'il y a des affaires pour faire, il y a des affaires pour faire, pour chemin à manger plus mer. Moi, je suis marché, je suis really, um, sorti pour vous parce que je suis monté, je suis monté, je suis monté, je suis marché, 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 je suis Ooh, um, okay. Parce que nous ne pouvons pas faire affaire. Donc yeah. so, nous ne pouvons pas assurer que nous passons pour l'excavateur en de manière pour ne pas endommager. Mais nous voulons travailler là pour pousser un chai pour nous assurer que nous ne pouvons pas faire affaire. Cette machine ne peut pas faire affaire. C'est aussi venu ensemble et puis payé en façade nord et sud de l'Amérique pour observer la semaine de la vaccine. Ça a été fait et puis, depuis le 24 pour les trois, en mode à avouer, en bas thème là, la vaccine qui a mené nous ensemble. Ça veut dire, mener la vaccine qui a mené nous ensemble pour abattre les mauvaises maladies et aussi pour protéger la santé. Il y a un grand chef nos, qui est aussi responsable pour ménager l'opération nationale des affaires de la vaccine à cette ici. Ça, c'est notre tech, le Jean-Baptiste. Expliquez que quand il y a un département de santé, il y a réfléchi à ce distance-là qui est sorti depuis l'année passée pour côté y a pour le présent. Non, je baptise, fait comprendre qui, malgré cette ici, pour qu'on chape à la pandémie corona, mais quand même, bon progrès j'ai fait. Depuis, mauvais maladie, ça a tombé à ce nom, à cette ici, en mars l'année passée. Il a ajouté qu'après plusieurs atteintes, 
pour trouver la vaccine. La terre finalement, ça dit l'année la vaccine qui a protégé nous contre Corona et toutes complications qui a porté. Nos jeunes partis annoncé que cette fois-ci j'ai plus que 2400 doses première dose là, c'est la vaccine là, et plus que 1000 en deuxième dose là. Et comme cette fois-ci, c'est un côté la famille en main activité sociale et puis on a l'autre avec les amis. Le département santé a encouragé tout le monde pour prendre l'avantage la service la vaccine ça là. Selon nos jeunes partis pays a pour changer de gré succès nous trouver et puis la vaccine a ses plusieurs années qui passé pour abattre différentes maladies comme la coqueluche tétanos la rougeole à parmi l'autre et en même façon nous ça servi la vaccine ça là pour abattre corona mais pour ça fait plus monde en population cette ci ni pour prendre dose la vaccine ça là ça c'est celle nous quand ça gagne à bout mauvais maladie pour empêcher ici manger pour chaper tant nous ça fait l'hôpital et plus mauvais toujours la mort. Nos jeunes baptistes qui ont fait un appel pour que cette ici changer l'importance du programme la vaccine ça là et l'importance li pour la famille examen particulier c'est plus jeune en société. Fama avec il de vater si au mieux cette ici tu participé à des semaines d'entraînement de certification à son meilleure façon pour entretenir si au mieux ça te pour cool le 26 avril 2021 programme là te étonné ses participants à ce manière pour suivre ces weg qui a place pour entretenir ce miel ça c'est programme étonnement ça là c'était pour faire assurer que ses participants plus au courant et puis ces diverses nécessités qui secteur ni pour embrasser pour toujours développer un produit qui s'en sort pour prendre l'avantage programme exportation c'est espoir agence export saint louche qui depuis ses participants ont trouvé certifié les producteurs sur miel c'est aussi pareil espérance pièce barouade et ben gorgette encore pour vendre à sur la place régionale et ben internationale chef officier exécutif pour export saint louche mademoiselle sonita daniel renforcer importance pour la niweg en place et pour qu'opérer à dégré la place internationale camadé pour faire ça c'est résultat de concerne de situation santé et la façon qui ça existé à la terre présentement. Daniel fait comprendre que à présent la terre qui vient encore plus sensible, les vient pour santé et monde qui a servi plus en plus manœuvre nouveau pour ça yo manger et servi. Et pour raison ça là, cette ci a une bon position pour poursuivre service en production sur le miel à une façon internationale. Mademoiselle Daniel annonce qui demande pour si le miel plus haut parce que quand il y a qui avait la bas pays et c'est pour raison qu'il a créé à ce les cultivateurs sur le miel pour produire plus présentement et présentement Daniel explique qui projet B City présentement qu'a collaboré puis ses facilités qui a certifié en production sur le miel pour faire assurer que la production sur le miel qui est bien certifié et qu'a fait en hauteur et des goûts internationaux ces participants bienvenus actuellement parce que il y a quoi qui initiative ça là qu'a développé industrie sur le miel là à des goûts qui international. Et c'est comme ça nous avons fait votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour qu'à regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je puisse encore se dire qu'on savait la vie. Les mecs peuvent se voir l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon fin de semaine. Et que vous pouvez vous conseiller à faire corona, changer de service masse, suspendre la distance et tout l'autre ça on est pour faire. Et que ça c'est le moment où je vous souhaite tout. Génial. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.